Hi, my name is McCall, and I'm going to show you how I packed for a year of travel in this. Hi again, my name is McCall Sears, and my husband Tucker and I are currently on what we're calling an adult gap year. We're six months into our one year trip, and so I decided to make a video that I wish I had been able to find when we were first planning and scheming about what we were going to bring on our one year trip. So we'll be going through everything that I was able to fit in my backpack duffel. We're going to talk about the things that went well, and then some things that uh, we wish we would have maybe changed or brought something different or even some things that we've already sent home. In this video, we will be going over clothing with the subcategories of clothing basics, outerwear, shoe wear, and then clothing miscellaneous. We'll be talking about first aid, toiletries, journaling and organization, electronics, and finally overall miscellaneous. This is going to be a really long video just by the nature of everything we'll be covering. So down in the description, I've put different time markers for each of the categories listed, and you can jump straight forward to the category you're most interested in in case you don't wanna watch the whole video. Also, just a reminder, I'm literally a no one on YouTube. I'm not getting paid to say any of this. Nothing's an affiliate link or anything like that. It's just born straight out of my personal experience of the last six months of traveling. So everything is pretty genuine, 100% genuine. I promise and also the goal of this video is to just help you strategize what you're gonna be packing for your long-term trip so let's jump in the first category is clothing and for clothing basics I brought two tank tops three t-shirts two pair of leggings one pair of long black pants three pair of shorts including one athletic, one for hiking, and one pair of jean shorts. I brought one knee-length skirt, seven pair of underwear, two sports bra, seven pair of socks, including five pair of regular ankle socks, and two pair of hiking socks. Overall, I'm really happy with the amount of clothing that I brought. I don't feel like it's too much or too little. I will say we already sent back some formal clothing that we had used for a wedding that we went to in Italy at the very beginning of our trip. Originally, our plan was to hang on to that all the way throughout the trip. We have a few more weddings to attend, um, but in the end, it was just taking up too much space in our luggage, so we ended up sending it home, and we're gonna figure out the formal wear later for those additional weddings. I also acquired three long items um, along the way throughout our travels. I did bring the one pair of long black pants, fully intending to use them to go into temples and things like that, um, but it just proved not to be enough. Uh, when we were in Johannesburg for six weeks, we were working with a conservative Muslim population, and wearing the same pants over and over every day just wasn't going to cut it, so I ended up getting a long skirt there to help mix things up, and I ended up getting another long pair of pants when we were in Cambodia visiting Angkor Wat, as I just didn't want to be wearing the same things over and over every day without washing them. It was entirely too hot there. So I got um, another pair of long pants there. For outerwear, I brought one pullover sweater, one zip-up rain jacket, and then one zip-up heavy-duty Arcteryx jacket. This was the perfect amount of outerwear for me. It can flex for multiple different types of weather, and there's even been times where I've worn all three layered up when it's been really cold. We actually had a freakish cold front come through just a few weeks ago when we were in Vietnam, and I was happy to have all of them there, and I've worn each of them so many times. They've been super perfect to bring. For shoe wear, I brought one pair of hiking boots, one pair of street shoes slash tennis shoes, and one pair of heavy duty sandals. This is one thing that I would have changed. So I ended up, I have ended up wearing my Birkenstocks about 90% of the time. I love them. They're great for walking long distances on the bus, on the plane, everything. I wear them 90% of the time. And my hiking boots are also essential. We've gone hiking in the Dolomites, hiking in South Africa. We're going to be doing a ton of hiking in New Zealand as well. And so there's really no way of getting around bringing my hiking boots either. So I would have either just dropped the street shoes altogether. They've, they're great shoes, but they I just never wear them. Or I would have gotten a crossover between uh, like a trainer and a hiking boot. So that would have at least brought it down because the shoes take up so much room in the luggage so this is one area that I would do something a little bit different so I may end up ditching my shoes before the end of the trip we'll see. 
For miscellaneous, I brought one one-piece swimsuit and one towel. So for the swimsuit, it's from a brand called Laundre. Laundre? I'm not sure how you say it, but I've loved it. It fits me great. I've worn it in the ocean, in the hot tub, in the swimming pool, in fresh water. It's held up great, and I haven't gotten sick of it yet. It's just a plain one-piece black swimsuit. I love it. And then for my towel, it actually functions as way more than just a towel. I've used it as a shawl. I've used it as a cover-up. I've used it as a blanket to keep warm on plain flights. It's just been all around versatile and I would highly recommend bringing one even though it takes up quite a bit of room in your luggage. I found it to be invaluable. So as I mentioned, I want to talk a little bit about a textile that has made all the difference in our packing success, and that is merino wool. So what is merino wool? It is a natural and renewable type of fabric made from the wool of merino sheep in New Zealand. And this wool is quite different from normal wool. This wool excels at keeping your body at a stable temperature. So when it's cold, it helps keep you warm. When it's warm outside, it helps keep you cool. And it's, it's, an, it's an extremely wicking uh, type of material. The shirt that I'm wearing right now is merino merino wool and out of everything that we packed I would say our favorite items have been made from merino wool. So the two big the companies that we've used the most are Icebreakers and Smart Wool, but there are quite a few companies out there so you can price shop and look around based off your own style and things like that. Now, when you look at the price, you're probably gonna do a double take. It is very expensive. There's no getting around that. But this stuff, I can't say it enough, is worth every penny. Also, if you know in advance that you're going, you can kind of look on these websites and pick out a few items and wait for some of their clearance or uh, annual, semi-annual sales. That helps drive down the cost. Tucker and I will able to get some of our pieces at like 40% off. So of, of the things that I brought that I showed at the beginning, um, one tank top, two t-shirts, so my pullover, my zip up, uh, five pair of my socks, no, all of my socks and three pair of my underwear are all merino wool. They are my favorite items that I brought. Now I will say the two items that I got from Icebreakers Extra Light, um, category are the two items that have not held up. That's because they are, again, extra light, but if you order anything from their normal category, I will say I've loved them. I wear this shirt maybe three, maybe four times a week. I love it. It is nat naturally antibacterial. It's not gonna get all these odor smells and things like that, and so this merino wool fabric is just amazing, and although it is expensive, I would say it is really worth, uh, it's worth the money. <laughs> So the second category is first aid, and just big disclaimer here, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, anything like that. So you definitely need to consult your GP before using any product, including any of the ones that I'm going to talk about here. These are just things that have come in really handy for me and for my husband as well while we've been on the road and things that I've been really happy to have with us. So yeah, just big disclaimer there first, definitely talk to your um, your healthcare provider before using any products. So we brought two different kinds of first aid kit with us. One a pre-made uh, first aid kit we just ordered from Amazon and the one homemade kind of first aid uh, kit. So the one that we ordered from Amazon is called Lifeline and it is pre-packaged ready to go. It's waterproof all along here which is great. It just has the traditional things in it, um, you know, antiseptic wipes, band-aids, um, gauze, all the, all the nifty stuff like that and this is what we bring with us when we go on our day hikes when we go out on the boat for a day anything like that and it has come in handy multiple times any little minor cuts that we get when we're out hiking things like that we can quick make sure and clean that out right there with alcohol pad or whatever we need to do and I would say be careful if you are going to try and go carry on only a lot of these kits that look more advanced and things like that come with either tweezers or scissors or some sort of sharp object in them and those will most likely be found and thrown out at some point going through security. So just something to be mindful of if you're going to be trying to travel carry on only. For our homemade first aid kit, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. I tend to kind of blend both traditional and then like crunchy methods together uh, when it comes to first aid for our family and um, I'm pretty proud of what we've come up with here. We've used everything. It's all come in handy. But uh, again, just a disclaimer, be sure to talk to your healthcare provider before 
um, using any of these products. It's just things that have worked for us and come in handy for us on the road. So first up, our probiotics. This is actually something that got added to our homemade first aid kit when we were in Thailand. Uh, before Thailand, we were in Cambodia. I got hit with a terrible GI bug. It was horrible, all the usual symptoms. And even once the immediate symptoms cleared up, I just had nausea lingering and lingering for over a week and I was at a loss and I finally went and got some probiotics at a local pharmacy just over the counter probiotics and they were able to clear up my nausea in about a day. Now whenever we're having issues, maybe um, indigestion or something like that, we go ahead and take these probiotics and it's really just been hugely helpful and uh, we use probiotics at home. I don't know why I didn't include them in the first place. Well, I know why. You can't bring everything right off the bat and so this is something that got added to our homemade first aid kit and I like could not recommend it more. There's so many brands out there um, and it, it's something that has been invaluable for us. Next up are Neosporin and Mederma. Uh, these just supplement our like traditional first aid kit that I showed before. These just tend to be things that we use up more. So we supplemented our first aid kit and they've come in really handy. And then next is the cold sore treatment. Both Tucker and I get cold sores, and so it's nice to have this with. If we feel it coming on, we can just put it on our cold sore, and it's just really miserable to have a cold sore. They tend to linger forever and ever and ever, and so if you can just nip it in the bud right from the beginning, super handy. So next up is my Hail Mary, my Windex, if you've seen my Big Fat Greek Wedding, and that is my tea tree oil. So tea tree oil is naturally antifungal, antibacterial, and antiseptic, and its uses are are pretty much limitless. Everything from acne to athlete's foot, vaginal yeast infections, you can use it in the shower to help um, steam out all sort of congestion in your upper respiratory tract. We use it for everything. We use it at home. I'm super glad that I uh, took the space in my bag to bring it along because we've used it on the road as well. So again, this is one of those more like hippie crunchy um, remedies. So just be sure it's right for you and talk to your GP first. Activated charcoal is next. Um, there's so many uses for this. You can look up a million and one uses for it online, but what we use it for is upset stomach. So if we've eaten something kind of funky or we're feeling something specifically in the stomach that's not great, we go ahead and take some activated charcoal. It has a bunch of absorption power and it can help resolve that. Multivitamins, so I actually don't take these every day just because we would run out and I would have to keep finding new ones. Um, but if we're starting to feel like a cold or something come on or we're starting to feel under weather, we go ahead and take these um, just to make sure we get a full dose of all of our vitamins during that time to try and keep our immune system up. The next three are just good to have along just in case you need them. Um, I have my non-drowsy Dramamine with ginger so it's more natural. You can actually just use ginger if you want. This is really nice if we're going out on the boat or something and we think we're going to get like motion sickness, seasickness of any sort. This is really great. Then we have allergy relief, so it's no fun to have allergies. For me, my eyes tend to puff up, um, Tucker gets really congested, so if that's the case, we have this with. We haven't had to use it yet, but I am glad that we have it along. And then um, the third one is ibuprofen, just in case you need some sort of pain relief or fever reducer. Good to have along in a time of need, it comes in very handy. And finally, you can laugh all you want, but when it helps you make it through a plane flight or a 12 hour bus ride, I think you'll be very grateful. And that is Imodium. You should probably get a prescription from your doctor before you leave. Basically, this will stop travelers' diarrhea for the, a certain duration. And I did have to use this for the first and only time on a 12 hour bus ride from Bangkok down to um, one of the Thai islands, and it saved me completely. completely. There was no usable bathroom facility on the bus and it would have been a really, really, really miserable ride. And so I am super thankful for it um, because when you really need to take it, then you need to take it. So honestly, just a good thing to have a prescription for and take with you. So the next category is toiletries, and I'm not going to bore you with all the basics like toothpaste and deodorant, but I am going to highlight some things that are either harder to find once you're already on the road that you're going to be using up, or things that are easy to forget. So first up is non-toxic sunscreen and bug spray. Although you're able to easily find sunscreen and bug spray on, on the road, if non-toxic is something that you're interested in and worried about, I would recommend bringing enough for your trip off the bat. It has been hard for us to find replacements for these. With that being said, it is possible when we 
in Thailand, we found one of my favorite non-toxic bug sprays that I've ever used. So it is possible, it's just if the timing is right and things like that, it might be something you want to bring from the beginning. Next up is Bard Shampoo. So if you're trying to go carry on only, you want to cut down on the liquids, a Bard Shampoo is going to be a really great option for you. Most places that we stay now do have bath gel and shampoo and things like that, but if we're on a multi-day trek or we decided to stay in a lower budget uh, hotel or hostel or something like that, uh, the Bard Shampoo has come in super handy for us and might be something you want to consider. Next up is Jin Jin's. These could have gone in the first aid category as well, but I keep them in my toiletry bag, so that's where we're talking about them today. And they're just a ginger candy that you can suck on when you're on the plane or on the bus if you do tend to get a little bit motion sick, but you don't want to take full blown Dramamine or the ginger capsules or something like that. Next up is uh, two products from Lush, actually. One is their dry shampoo. It is in a bar form. You powder it on your hands. If I open it, it's going to get super messy. Um, and this is just great, again, if you're on a multi-day trek or you've just gone a few days between showers. It's the reality of travel. I think we all know that. And just putting in a dry shampoo helps alleviate some of that oil at the roots of your hair and makes you feel fresh, makes you look fresh, and it just helps you extend the time between showers a little bit, which can come in super handy. The second product is comes in the same tin, it looks exactly the same as this, and it is a face wash and makeup remover all in one. It's called Like a Virgin. Awesome, it's also in a bar form, so it's again eliminating some liquid if you're trying to go carry on only. And I had started out with a different product, my cellar water at the beginning of our trip, and it started clogging the pores on my eyelashes and making my eyes twitch, so I had to toss it out real quick. And there was a Lush in Milan that we were able to visit. They hooked me up with this product, the Like a Virgin product, and it has been great. It's made out of all natural ingredients and it cleanses my skin, takes off my makeup like a charm in a bar form. It was everything that I needed for um, for travel. So it was perfect and they do zero waste which is just super awesome as well. So I will try and link that product below um, so that if you're interested you can check out both of these products. The next category is journaling and organization, and while some might consider this a bit of a waste of space in your already precious and limited amount of packing room, for me this has been my favorite and most essential category. So I'm going to start with my traveler's journal, and this has got to be my number one prize possession. Like I am not over exaggerating, I love this thing. I write in it maybe every other day, maybe every third day, and it's just so much fun. It's a way to look back on my travels, remember them, and I also get to watercolor in here sometimes. There's little pockets at the front and the back to put little trinkets, um, my memories, ticket stubs, and things like that, and I think um, once we return from our travels, I'm going to just cherish this forever and ever, and it's already my favorite piece that I've brought along this year. So. Definitely not a waste of space. I would highly recommend getting one. I love this brand. I'm forgetting the name at the moment, but I'll look it up, look it up and I'll put a link in the description along with everything else um, so that if you're interested, you can check it out. They have line pages, blank pages, little dotted pages, so whatever your style, they have an insert for it. And they also have little fun accessories that you can add, and it's just absolutely wonderful. The next is my bullet journal. So just because you're on a year off doesn't mean you don't have to plan at all. I still keep my bullet journal. This is just a way for me to keep track of birthdays for loved ones back home, make sure we don't miss them, as well as big plane and bus bus rides, plane flights, things like that, so I don't miss it. I can stay on top of everything and helps keep me organized. I've been using Pickup Lime's very simplified bullet journaling method, so I'll link to her video as well down below. Um, it's just really simplified and perfect for what I need for this year off. Finally is my watercolor set. I did not start out with this, but I dabble in watercolor at home. I thought it was going to be too frivolous, so when we were in South Africa, I went to an art store and got a travel watercolor set, so I love it. It's a way for me to just do something fun, pursue a hobby. This year when we have some downtime, I love it, and I also get to watercolor some in my travel journal, which is really fun. So maybe it won't be watercolor for you, but I would suggest bringing something on the artistic side that you can kind of stretch and grow yourself in during your time away. And it, it's just something really fun that makes this year a little bit more special.
The next category is electronics, and similar to toiletries, I'm not going to bore you with all the things I know you're probably already bringing. I'm just going to try and highlight some things maybe you wouldn't have thought about otherwise. So first and foremost is your converter, which you probably already thought about, but I would highly, highly suggest getting an all-in-one if you can. So if you're going to multiple continents, multiple countries, everyone's going to have their own type of plug-in, and carrying all these different converters is just really annoying. So if you can get an all-in-one, that's best. Additionally, if you can can get them to have uh, their normal input as well as some USB inputs or and or a type C this has been invaluable for us that way I can plug my camera battery and my and or my laptop as well as both of our phones our Kindle we can be charging that all at the same time now most of these are gonna have safety measures put in place to accurately convert the power so they're not ruining any of your electronic equipment. Nowadays most of them have that automatically built in but just something to double check. Up next is small but mighty. It is our headphone jack splitter so we don't have the fancy Bluetooth equipment to do two Bluetooth to one device and we are huge audiobook and podcast people so for those long bus rides, those long plane flights, these audio jacks have been just the money the money for us, we love them, so just something to think about if you're traveling in a group. Next up is your power bank. Again, you're probably already using this, you're probably already thinking about this. One piece of information that I wanted to add is that if you're gonna try and go carry on only or have this with you on your travel day through the airport, which is the whole point of having it, uh, securities, especially in Southeast Asia is where we've been running into this, uh, are starting to really crack down on how many amps or whatever they can have. I'm not exactly sure. It's M. A H is the is the type that it can have. The cutoff we've been seeing is 32,000 MAH. Luckily ours is 10,000 so we've been able to bring it through but just something to keep in mind we saw a whole stack of these getting thrown out um, at the security line when we were in Chiang Mai. It's the first time we've run into it so just something to keep in mind when choosing your power bank. So your external storage. So everyone's gonna recommend a hard drive. You're taking all these pictures on your wonderful trip. You want to make sure they don't get corrupted. You want to make sure you have them all safely when you get home and although a Hard drive may be fine for some people. After copious amounts of research, I decided on a solid state drive. So solid state drive is external storage, but it has no spinning pieces like a hard drive. This means that it can hold up and is more durable for those of us who are roughing it a little bit more. We have our, our baggage and our backpacks with us at all times, getting thrown into the bus on long haul treks with us. We take everything that we have with us at all times. and. The solid state drives are maybe three, maybe four times the price of our external hard drive, but for us that peace of mind was worth it knowing that there's less that can go wrong with it. There's no guarantee that it will make it through all the way safe, but for us the solid state drive was worth the extra money. Just something to keep in mind if you are into photography or video or you just really want um, to make sure you have all of your images when you get home. And then finally, Kindle. Everyone knows about Kindle. Um, I'm not going to harp on it too much. I love a hard copy book as much as anyone. A Kindle is just practical when you're traveling long term. One thing that I did want to add my fun little um, additional piece of info is that if you are signed up with your local library before you leave, oftentimes they have apps that interface directly with your Kindle. So when you want a new book, you don't have to buy one through the Kindle store. Instead, you can go through your library's app, rent it, it usually has to interface with Amazon, and then you can loan the book on your Kindle like you would a hard copy book. So the app that I use with my my local library back home is called Libby. It's worked great. Um, we are budget travelers, so and I also love reading, and so it's been great not to have to buy all these books. Instead, I just get to loan them like I would if I was uh, at home and going to the library. I can just do that all remotely and electronically through the Libby app. Uh, Overdrive works as well, so just check out whatever your local library offers, and it's a super, super great tip to continue to read without having to purchase a bunch of stuff in the Kindle store. All right, we have made it to our last category, which is miscellaneous, things that it couldn't fit into any other category. So let's jump straight in. 
First off is my resistance bands. I am so happy that I brought these. It is a little bit difficult to stay fit when on the road. So sometimes we're lucky and our hotel has a gym, in which case we love to utilize the gym. And we also uh, try and hike as much as possible on our travels. It's something we really enjoy and just a great way to stay fit as well. But if we're not falling into one of those two categories, it can be a little bit difficult um, to stay fit and active, especially when you, know, you don't want to be running through a foreign city or something like that. And resistance bands have been so so invaluable for me. I can't even express. Um, if you just Google on YouTube resistance band workout, there's so many out there. One YouTuber that I really love and follow her workouts most of the time is Sydney Cummins. I'll go ahead and link her down below as well. She has a whole playlist of resistance band workouts um, and she modifies them to be low impact if you want. So if you're staying in an Airbnb, apartment, hostel type situation and you don't want to be pounding on the floor and disturbing all your neighbors, they're just really perfect, usually around 30 minutes. Um, and I just really love them and she's really great and I'm so glad I brought the resistance band. We use them dozens and dozens of times. Next up is a headlamp. So we went camping in Namibia and this came in hugely helpful there if we needed to set up in the dark or get our fire started in the dark or something like that. But it's come in handy so many other times. When we're biking and it gets dark on the way home, we can have a hands-free light option or we've even come across some caves and this gives us the opportunity to explore a little bit more there as well. So I wasn't sure how much we were gonna use this outside of our camping trip in Namibia, but it has come in handy so many times that I would recommend bringing it and making the space in your bag. Next up is a like packable bag. So a lot of places around the world are banning single-use plastics, yay! And sometimes you just also need another bag beyond your big duffel. And so we are able to pack this down, clip it on the back of our bag, and then when we need it, when we're buying groceries or something, it just unfolds like that. And your bag is ready to go. Maybe a beach bag, whatever you need. And it's just super handy that it has a pocket that it folds itself into and can clip right on the outside of your bag. Next up is a waterproof, uh, airtight um, little container for which to bring your hotel room keys, uh, your ID, your card, things like that during your water sport days or your beach days. We used to use these as a family when we'd go to the water park. My dad would always be seen having one of these. That's where I got the idea. And um, we're super glad we've had them when we were in Thailand on all the islands and stuff, just out on the water all day. We could keep our valuables with us, not have to worry about them, but also make sure they weren't getting wet. Next up is the pocket laundry wash. So this is like kind of laundry, deter laundry detergent. So if it's been a while between washes, you need maybe need some clean underwear, maybe you need some clean socks. You just fill the sink with warm water. You put in um, a tablet or two of these, depending on how many things you're washing. And then you can just sink wash your items, hang them up to dry, and it's gonna help make a bridge to the next time you can get some items washed. So this is super handy to have with, um, especially when it's been a little while between washes. Reusable straw. So this is something I'm trying to use more and more of, so write, manifest, we'll say it out loud, and we'll do it more. So again, banning of single-use plastics, which is great, just trying to reduce um, our plastic footprint and so these are great they pack up really small and they have a little wand you can clean out the inside with and it's just super great um, to have with as well face mask and earplugs I know it's basic and it's standard but I just want to say it's not a waste of space you'll use it beyond the plane trust me if you're in a loud busy city and you're not used to the noise going all through the night when we were in Hanoi it seemed to be bright and noisy literally every moment of the day, like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., horns still honking, people still going. So if you want to get a good night's sleep, it's just nice to have these along, as well as their use on the plane. And then last, but certainly not least, uh, for me, my Bible, super important. Maybe for you, it's going to be a different scripture. Maybe it's going to be a book of quotes or an inspirational book by one of your favorite authors. You're going to be growing in a 100,000 different ways during this trip. But one way that can maybe sometimes fall to the wayside is your your like spiritual life and if you just bring uh, something from home, uh, something that has to do with your spiritual life with you. For me, it's my Bible. It's super important to me. Um, it just helps to ground me and helps me continue to grow in my spiritual life as I'm growing in all my other ways. Also, just a fun little note, I put <laughs> copies of our passports and other important documents in my Bible. I know I'm, this is going to be the last thing that I lose, and so if I have those things in there, I know always where they are, and I know that it's going to be on my person most of the time. 
Phew, we made it. That was a super long video and we covered so much, but I really hope that you found it to be helpful and you have some practical takeaways for when you are planning what you're gonna be bringing on your long-term trip. I wish that I had been able to find something like this when we were planning on what we were gonna pack for our one-year trip. And so I just really hope that it has helped you in some way. If you liked this video and thought it was helpful, it'd be super helpful for me if you subscribe to my channel and like this video. It helps other people discover this same video. Also, my other passion is whole food plant-based eating. So um, you can check out some of those videos that are already up on my channel. We have some Vegan Eat City guides if you need some new food travel inspo. And thank you guys so much for watching. It means, uh, it means the world to me. So cheers from the Sears.